This video is about the design of a novel low cost 1 to 15 power transmission that I designed and built as part of my final project for a mechanical engineering degree. It's quite a unique design and I've not seen anything that similar so I thought I'd make this video to see what people think of it. Maybe it's useful for someone out there but hopefully at the very least it's just interesting. So what's this transmission for and why does it look so weird? The transmission is a two-stage roller chain design capable of handling really high torque of up to 2,500 newton meters. This drivetrain was developed as part of a larger design project to design a low-cost floating hydrokinetic turbine that aims to improve electricity access in rural off-grid communities. This created some specific design requirements with the final design focusing on affordability and ease of manufacture and user repairability, which is why it looks so weird. The idea with this turbine is that it can be very quickly and easily deployed onto the surface of a fast flowing river or stream with flow coming in from the right and flowing through the turbine. The component in the middle of the turbine is the runner which has these flat scoop like blades. When the river flow impacts these blades it slows down converting some of its kinetic energy into mechanical energy which causes the runner to rotate and that's ultimately converted into electricity with a generator inside the turbine. The whole thing's floating on the surface of the river with these pontoons which are shaped like aerofoils to, in theory, speed up the flow and increase the efficiency a little bit. It's all held in place by an aluminium box section frame which has these mooring points at the front which allow it to just be tethered in place to the shore with some anchors, so unlike other forms of hydroelectricity there's no major civil infrastructure so it should be very quick and easy to deploy in a remote area. The power output depends on the flow speed of the river, but it should produce a peak of around 2.5 kilowatts at 3 meters a second of flow speed, which is very high for a river. Normal flow speeds would probably result in 500 watts to 1000 watts. The whole thing's designed to be bolted together, so it should be easy to transport and as low cost as possible to produce, aiming to be around 2000 pounds per turbine. So onto the drivetrain, which is the focus of this video. The drivetrain is housed within the sealed central drum of the runner, which keeps it away from water. Because the runner is quite large, with a diameter of 1.1 meters, it rotates at a relatively slow 20 rpm. Because of this, some kind of gearing is required to step this 20 rpm up to a reasonable speed to allow for efficient electrical generation. And that's where the drivetrain comes in. It has a 1 to 15 ratio, which allows the generator to spin at 300 rpm, which is much more efficient speed than 20 rpm. The peak efficiency for this generator is around 400 rpm, so 300 is pretty good. So why go for this overcomplicated mechanical monstrosity instead of just a planetary gearbox? The main reason is cost. At the highest flow speed, this drivetrain needs to be able to resist up to 2 kN of torque, which is an insanely high amount of torque. You can get planetary gearboxes rated for this high amount of torque, mainly for micro wind turbines and stuff like that, but they're like £1,800 per unit and that's prohibitively expensive for this application, it's almost more than the cost of the entire turbine. But the main reason is this was just a university project and I just wanted to design something interesting and cool. And I think this final design is both of those. It took quite a few iterations and prototypes to end up with this design. The final design is based off an inverse belt drive. These are sometimes used in robotics for compact and cheap high ratio drives. By folding a timing belt inside out, they're a good way of achieving a high gear reduction in a small space. However, due to the massive torque requirement of this turbine, timing belts are out of the question, but roller chain is really strong and can handle this amount of torque. Making the first stage of the chain drive an inverse loop allows it to fit within the 400mm diameter of the inner drum of the runner, while also maximising the gear ratio. Another big advantage of the inverse stage is that moving all of the force transfer out to this 400mm diameter greatly reduces the amount of force created by the same moment on the chain. The inverse sprocket also has loads of engagement with many rollers around the diameter, spreading out the load and potentially reducing the wear on the chain and the sprocket itself. The design makes use of motorcycle chain and mostly off-the-shelf components. The inverse sprocket is the most complicated custom component and this was CNC machined by the engineering department at my university and they did a really good job with it. I then machined and laser cut the rest of the custom components myself. Despite some benefits, the design also definitely comes with some pretty obvious downsides. The first one is efficiency. The chain needs to be pushed outwards against the inverse sprocket so that it engages with it. And I've done this by using some rollers and some static pads to push it outwards against that outer diameter. 
This obviously leads to an increase in friction and reduced efficiency when compared to normal chain drives or planetary gearbox. Secondly, there's not a very good way to tension the chain at the moment or deal with any chain stretch that might happen over time. I just didn't have time or space to implement chain tensioners in this design. One of the most difficult parts of the design actually was getting the correct spacing of the sprockets and the rollers so the chains on both stages are tensioned correctly. You can see that the location of this shaft that's shared between the first and second stages affects the length of both chains. I ended up solving this by using some parametric equations in the CAD design that define everything, and then slowly iterating on the spacing of the pulleys until the total length of both stages is fully divisible by the pitch of the chain. This is because the total length of the chain needs to be a whole number of chain lengths, you can't just have like half a link or three quarters of a link or something like that. After doing the initial prototype, I also did a generative study to try and reduce the weight of the central plates which hold the support for the chain. This does end up looking quite cool, but it's probably a bit unnecessary and just adds to the complexity of the design. And the final downside for this design is it's probably not got a very long service life. I obviously didn't test it under load or test it for a long amount of time, but I don't imagine that this drivetrain would survive a very long amount of time without something wearing out. That being said, I do think that this sort of drivetrain might have some kind of application. If I ever did go about making a fourth axis for my homemade CNC, I can imagine this kind of two-stage inverse drive using timing belts instead of roller chain might be quite a good way of getting high gear reduction in a very small amount of space with minimal backlash for a lot less cost than a harmonic drive. That's pretty much it for this drivetrain. Let me know what you think of the design and if you think there are any other potential applications for something like this. Sorry that it's been so long since my last upload. Things have been quite busy for me. I've started a new job as a mechanical engineer and I've moved into a new house. I have got some interesting projects planned for 2025 for this channel and I'd love to start posting more regularly again, but the amount of effort that's required alongside full-time work is quite exhausting, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon in the next video.